Hello. Bit of set of time on actually. That won't stand up, will it? What about like that? But then it'll knock over when you. I'll just need to not drink any water. No. Right, okay. Welcome to <laughs> welcome to episode three of Building MHEC. Um, we've been four weeks off, three or four weeks off, after promising that we wouldn't miss a week because um, we've had lots of exciting things that we've been working on. I also then forgot the camera, so Ben has literally had to um, speed to get to my house and back to bring the camera back. And um, then one of the mics hasn't charged as well, so... Really professional setup. Very, very short, brief insight into what it's like with working, working with Dan on a daily basis, to be honest. <laughs> so you might not be able to hear the sound that great because this is the mic here picking it up. It should normally be about here. But anyway, that will be fine. We'll just uh, speak to it. So, yeah, we, we've taken a couple of weeks off. Obviously, the, the idea behind building MHEC is to bring you up to speed into day-to-day -day things that's happening as we're growing MHEC into the biggest and best fitness education provider in the country. We've had a few weeks off because we've been working on some pretty massive changes to two of our products slash services, which is number one, the MHEC gym, where we're sitting, and number two, the award in mental health and exercise coaching. So I'm not gonna give too much away because we haven't officially started to market or advertise either yet, um, but we're gonna give you a little bit of an end. <laughs> but this is what's telling. <laughs> but I'll probably tell you everything. So if you if you watch this before we launch, you're you're gonna get kind of first the first insight into some of the changes that we're making and why we're making them. So, like I said, two of our products. So we've got the MHEC Gem and we've got the MHEC Award, and both we've decided that we really want to change the direction in which we're going with both in order to suit our values i guess so the, the first thing i'm going to speak about is the gym and i'm going to tell you why we're making some changes we we love the gym and um, the gym is such an incredible unique and needed concept you know the gym is a space for people who want to improve their mental health through exercise and um, it's actually unbelievable that there aren't gyms all across the country or all across the world that do this already but i'm the firmest believer that there aren't because we are the ones that are so far ahead when it comes to knowing how to make that operate the safe space to provide and um, the education and expertise needed for the staff and management to be able to operate those gyms so that's why i believe we're really far ahead from everyone else and i think a lot of people have maybe wanted to do it but they don't know how to do it. Now, what I have identified and I've shared with the team over the course of the last few months is I felt that the gym was starting to become a premium product. So what I mean by that is what's one of the best ways to get people who are anxious and nervous and have low self-worth, potentially struggling with body image issues or depressions into a gym, make it a safer space give them extra attention. How do you do that? Make it smaller. So the MHEC gym here, it's about 2,000 square feet and it's nothing like a commercial size gym. And what we had then identified was that by making it a small space, it had then become a premium service. You had to pay more than an average gym to be able to get in. So for example, you've got you know, a pure gym or the gym group where you're paying anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds per month per membership. You've then got other gyms where you're maybe paying about 40, 50 pounds, maybe some boot camps you're paying 60. And at one point we were 99 pounds a month or we had decreased that to, to 79 pounds. I thought you were laughing there. So, no. so, <laughs> and both of us are choked up with a cold as well. Um, and so I, you know, was waking up in the night and realizing that actually we were moving far away from our values because our core mission, our mission statement is to make exercise and mental health support as accessible as possible and help people transform their lives through exercise. And we realized that actually it had turned into something that it wasn't meant to be. And therefore, we need to go back to square one, look at our roots, look at our vision, look at our values, look at our mission statement and change things and make it more accessible. Um, so then I brought this idea to Ben and the team who then kind of have been working to develop it over the course of the last couple of months. Yeah, and it's been, it's been a nice discussion to have to kind of revisit things and redraw the map, as it were, to um, kind of 
mix up what we're doing because again we've we've never we've never really stood still with anything that we've been doing. We've either listened to feedback from our customers, we've listened to feedback from our team um, uh, who, uh, across either the gym or the, the academy as well. We've listened to feedback from even the market, what our prospective customers telling us, even if they hadn't signed up for us. And we've learned so much from that as well. So we've always kind of really took the opportunity to, to learn, adapt, change, overcome, reinvent, revitalize, refresh. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I just rolled off the top. <laughs> no, I was nothing. Um, just, to, just to make things better because we, we're, we always want to improve what we're doing. We always want to seek continuous improvement for ourselves, for our business and for our customers. And we can only do that if we start to look inwards and listen to the feedback that people are telling us. So we went on a bit of a, a mission to figure out what's going to work best. In all honesty, I don't think we've got the full answers just yet, but we are in this, what I normally call the, the build, measure, learn feedback loop. We're very, very much in the first phase just now of building. And once we're trying new things, we're going to learn from that. Uh, we're going to measure the success of that. And then when we measure the success of that, we're going to then learn for the next phase of building and iterating and improving. So that's kind of where we're at with things. And uh, it's actually been a really exciting process. It, it has been. I think it's like, this is such a valuable lesson for anyone that's a business owner. You don't necessarily need to be in the fitness industry or anyone you know, who's self-employed. Um, or if you know, you're working for a company and you've got a creative um, role within the company or you, you help the company with you know, continuous improvement and development, is that we're, we're the firmest believers in you know, sticking to your values and you know always operating with this mission and vision in mind and sometimes what happens is the more you build something the more you add value to something the more you actually improve something the more complicated it can get or the further it moves away from what your values were so for example with the gym it's a perfect example you know we've we've got a ton of members they're great they're doing like absolutely amazing and we launched an ad campaign a couple of weeks ago and we got so many people interested in the gym. We had about 150 people express interest in the gym, but affordability was a factor. Now, we aren't gonna be as arrogant or as um, narrow-minded as a lot of the rest of the fitness industry to be like, oh, well, we can't decrease our prices. Or, you know, the, the most common thing you'll hear is, well, you have to teach people to invest in their health. Absolutely, you know, the, everyone does need greater education on um, how to prioritize their health better when life gets really difficult. But that doesn't always need to come at a large cost. And I think it's been, a, it's been such a valuable lesson for us. And there wasn't anything we were doing wrong, by the way. I don't, I don't disagree with anything that we've done. It's that now we're actually just wanting to make it even more cheaper, which makes it even more affordable for people, because that's what the most important thing is. The impact, impact is what's most impo important. Obviously, um, all of our businesses generate money, which we are then able to use to put towards growing the businesses even further in order to help more people, right? And so therefore, the more money that you charge, the greater the business can grow, more people can get helped. But no one's going to get helped in the first place if it's at too much of a premium cost and there's not enough people that are able to get the service that you are that you're, you're, you're wanting to provide. So like Ben said, it's a really exciting opportunity. So it's the takeaway lesson from the gym. If you are, you know, um, work for a business or if you've got your own business, like you need to have awareness. You need to have awareness over the business. You always need to try and operate with your values in line. If you see that you're starting to move away from your values, you need to go back to the drawing board and see how you can make things more aligned. And um, continuously look at what you're doing. We don't say, you know, have shiny object syndrome and, um, you know, get distracted constantly, but um, it's really important to constantly take stock, have awareness, have greater clarity of your offering and your service so you can, you know, operate with your vision in mind and help as many people as possible. So if you're local to Sterling um, or if you are a PT, if you're a gym owner, whatever it is, keep an eye out on our socials over the course of the coming months because we're going to show you what we are doing as a business to be able to invite more people than ever before to be able to join our service and get the help that they need. So that's the gym. 
Um, we're going to tell you a little bit about the award. <laughs> do you want to do you want to kick us off when it comes to the award and what we kind of identified and then the changes we're maybe going to be making? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing that we identified was um, there there was a bit of friction um, for people to join um, for the award effectively. So, as you may or may not be aware, the award as it was. Um, was a year-long programme of study um, with two in-person or virtual training days slap bang in the middle of that um, where they would come and learn the bulk of the mental health and exercise coaching um, material which would they then they would then be assessed on um, whoever came along to attend that both an online assessment and a practical assessment what we found like we were just saying a minute ago about listening to the feedback was um, a lot of our prospective learners and customers um, were put off by the fact that it was a year-long thing. Um, people wanted it quicker, they wanted to get certified earlier. Um, when we were reaching out and in discussions with um, other organisations, whether that be um, organisations in the public sector, the private sector, in this industry, gym chains and so on and so forth, about looking at... Sorry, uh, that might be picking up that noise, by the way. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just move my right. Put your hands on your lap. Sit on my hands. Um, where was that? Yeah, so we were, we were um, chatting with organisations about potentially um, putting their employees through the award. Um, again, a year-long programme was off-putting for that. So that was really the starting point for us to kind of go, actually, if we could reinvent this now, what would it look like? Um, and work backwards. And originally, when the, the award was first launched, it was just the two days, wasn't it? And then the year long was added on. Um, so that's kind of given birth to looking at a new way of delivering it, which is still pretty much the same way, just in a much shorter time frame, um, with added benefits of different membership options. Um, should learners wish to take that up with us? Yeah, 100%. It, it's similar to the. I suppose it's similar to the gym. Um, you constantly build, you grow, you add more, you add more value. You, you, this is what I've kind of been explaining to people over the course of the last couple of months. Like for any business owner or anyone who's wanting to create a service, whether you know you're wanting to you know, paint and then like sell your paintings online or you know, whether you're wanting to start a painting and decorating business, like you start with a minimal viable product. So that like the, the simplest form of the product that you can take to market that's still going to work and get a result. And that's what we did three years ago when we launched the award. It was the two day course, we took it to market. We then realized that the thing that people were loving the most alongside the two day course was the community that we were building around it, which consisted of, you know, weekly educational virtual events and in person meetups and, you know, um, Consultancy, consultancy calls and you know group calls and just loads of things that we were doing to really enhance and grow the value and the experience of the product. What then happened was because we created a whole year's worth of content and the people who were being the, the coaches who were being the most consistent across those 12 months, attending the events, implementing the events, their businesses and their services um, and the experience they were being able to provide for clients went from there to there. So we were like, oh my God, this is transformative. Everyone needs to do this. And also because we were wanting to get our endorsement with SIMSPA, which is the Chartered Institute for Management of Sport and Physical Activity, which is a mouthful, and they're the fitness industry's regulatory body. Because we were wanting to get that endorsement and we were wanting to gain other partnerships that were going to really set us apart from other qualifications and really take the industry by storm, we really wanted to do everything by the book and we're like right okay well if we're really wanting to train people up to a high standard let's do 12 months let's make that 12 months compulsory therefore again we're going to get all the coaches from here to here what a change we're going to have however the, the issue that we've identified is and we'll like the whole point of this is we're being transparent we're being honest like we will be so honest about everything that we do as we do it we've identified that yeah we've got this vision of you know, totally transforming the exercise and mental health support that our, that our populations and communities are going to be able to receive. But actually making it a 12 month compulsory commitment for a majority of the fitness industry just isn't doable. It's not. 
and I think we will again will be quite honest in saying that we used to be, feel quite negative about that and maybe think, well, people need to prioritise it. If they aren't prioritising 12 months, they don't want to do it. But 12 months is a long period of time. It really is. And I think that rather than being frustrated that people didn't want to do that, we actually needed to identify that people still really want to do this award. They want to become certified, but it's a huge commitment doing 12 months. And actually, what's better than only having a... a a collect group of really dedicated MHIP coaches being trained up to the higher, highest quality and then nothing in between, mm. actually what we need to do is we need to meet people at the middle and get everyone trained up to at least this standard or that standard. So we're not going to give too much away just now. Been quite good at it. Well done. Um, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially we're launching a brand new version of the award in mental health and exercise coaching so if you're a fitness professional and you've been looking at our MHEC award we are launching a brand new version of this award th this month next month so um so august which is more accessible than ever before it is easier to complete than ever before and um, it is more affordable than ever before and there's been a really exciting uptake on it already so yeah if you've been looking at the award in MHEC and um, you're going to love this so please keep an eye on socials over the course of the coming weeks because it's going to it's going to be an amazing opportunity becoming an MHEC coach and helping your clients with their mental health has never been easier yeah and the final thing to add to that we have made it more accessible it is easier to access Nothing has been diluted. It is still the exact same award. It's still the same certification. The quality and the standards still remain the same. We're just making a couple of adjustments to it, and that's all it is. Yes, a very important point that I forgot to say. Exact same. You're getting the exact same. Um, so you can be a certified MHIT coach. Right, OK. We've got a couple minutes because we had to cram this into as short a time as possible before we've got a team meeting with, our new, um, with some new gym staff members, which is really exciting. Um, what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> um, we're going on my stag do. Whee! <laughs> what, what happened the last time we took you on holiday? Um, yeah, so very quickly, backstory. For, I was the first person in our friendship group to turn 30. So um, our friends very kindly um, took us on holiday for my 30th, which was effectively a de facto stag do without the wedding. So um, I was bundled into a car, drove to the airport and told to get changed in the toilets into this most ridiculous Bruno um, outfit. Which was funny in fairness. You can probably, it's probably still my grid on Instagram if oh, you want to You look like a fat flower pot man. But the funny thing, well, the funny thing about it now was nobody spoke to me for nine months because they were worried they were going to give away the, the fact that it, well, this was like a massive secret. So I, ju I just thought everyone had fell out with me. I thought I'd done something. People weren't looking me in the eye. People weren't speaking to me. People were avoiding me. So it's been nice this time round because I know it's coming, um, but I still don't have a clue what's happening. I only found out on Monday, today's Friday, I found out on Monday what time Dan was picking me up for the airport. Didn't even know what time the flight was until five days ago. Um, I don't know who's going. I don't know what we're doing. I know where we're going, thankfully, but um, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, so there, there's, a, there's a group chat don't know whether you might be able to see it. That was a group chat from last one called Do Not Tell Ben. <laughs> and that was, when, when was it? That was, was six years ago. Yeah, it was about six years ago. Showing my age here. Yeah, created on the 10th of January, 2018. So bear in mind, we went away in May. So that was like five months of nobody speaking to you. So yeah, yeah so Ben Stag. So I'm going to upload this like now, pretty much. So um, if you watch this between... If you watch this on Friday the 26th of July or Saturday the 27th of July, go on to my Instagram <laughs> so you can, see, uh, you can see what we do, what we do for the big man. But you're looking forward to it though. Yeah, oh, I can't wait. It's been funny though because I know you guys are all in group chat, so you guys are all bouncing off one another, making plans, getting really excited about it. I, if, I'm, if I'm being perfectly honest, I've not really thought about it until the last couple of weeks. And Kirsty was like, it's just stagged at the end of the month. I'm like, oh, God, yeah. Just because I've not been involved in anything. But, like, it doesn't mean, like, I'm not looking forward to it at all. It's just 
I know how giddy the fucking the lot of you guys will be like coming up with all this stuff. So it's it's gonna be nice to finally unwrap the present, get involved in things, and uh, get dressed up. I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Right. We will do this again next week, and um, we'll let you know how the stag do was, and we'll let you know other updates that we've got when it comes to building MHEC into the best fitness education provider in the country. So we'll see you next time. See you then. Boom. Good hustle. Well done. Twenty minutes on the dot. That was on the nose. Well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>